Hey, welcome back everybody. Suckbox Sunday here on 12-30-2018. Just a couple quick updates today, things I've kind of pondered over the weekend a little bit. Um, first and foremost, I'm uh, continuing to make progress on my uh, Analog 2 Discovery mounted inside of my uh, chassis kit. Ended up making me a new back plate with uh, places for uh, speaker jacks. At any rate, I'm waiting on a stereo chassis uh, socket that for whatever reason I cannot find one of. I have like 1,000 mono ones, but uh, stereo, I'm having to wait on the mail to bring me one. So, anyway, I am going to uh, wrap that up soon and uh, get back to the Analog 2 Discovery video series. I'm pretty, pretty psyched about this one, to be honest. All right, up next, how many of you have bought or built one of these little $7 uh, kits. Um, it's a component tester if you don't know what it is and you can find them all over eBay or lots of places for about seven dollars plus shipping. Some of them even seven dollars with shipping. This one was a little nicer. It came with a plastic case and I just had to put, put it together and put the battery in it. It took about 15 minutes at the most. It took longer to peel the covers off of the off the plastic than it did anything else. But you know, I've been. I went out and watched some videos. Uh, the guy uh, down in Australia, EV blog guy, he made he made a series on this. And and while they're not perfect for the money, it's a heck of a deal. You drop in a capacitor, it'll tell you what it is. Its leakage value. You drop in a resistor, it'll tell you exactly what it is. You drop in a diode, it'll tell you what it is. It does a pretty good job. He he was able to fool it with a few kind of oddball items, but. Um, for the most part, for just having something on your bench here. So something I've never admitted to this group, um, the resistor color charts. Um, my entire life I have struggled with because I am somewhat colorblind. Um, I, uh, greens and browns, um, they might as well be all one and the same. I don't even know what color shirt I have on right now. Um, so um, it's not that I don't know the color codes. It's just um, sometimes I pull up a resistor and I'm sitting here looking at it. And I end up having to measure it to figure out what it is because I just can't delineate um, between those things. So, uh, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. But um, this is a good little item to have on your bench. You just drop the item. You drop, you know, drop it in here. Close the thing, push the button here, and it'll come up and tell you exactly what it is. So uh, I'm just going to say for the money, not a bad little tool. I wouldn't use it as a highly precision you know, instrument, for, but for quick bench checks, great little unit. All right, up next, this one's just blowing my mind. And I'm not trying to self-promote something because I don't know what the heck I'd be promoting other than something I'm giving away for free. But... I posted this 2018 free Deoxit D5 video <laughs> over the weekend, and it's had 392 views in a day, right? I posted a Soapbox Sunday in the, within a few hours, and I've had 765 views. I just don't get it. I thought this free Deoxit video would go viral and that people would post it all over different forums on the web and social media outlets. And this thing would just go crazy, and people would want this free deoxid. But hey, maybe not. I don't know. It just, you know, sometimes you make a video just like this Carry AES video. I figured it would have a few hundred views right now. 2.3, you know, 2,300 2, views in, in a day. You know, it's like, I just never know what I make and how many views it's going to get. So uh, I give up on trying to uh, trying to predict those types of things. I don't I don't know. Maybe you guys have some insight. Give me some comments down below. All right, I just want to say thank you, a very sincere thank you to all of you who have made donations to Blue Glow Electronics. Um, you know who you are, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I have a, on my website, I have a link up there for donations, and there's a PayPal button there, and you can click on it, and then you basically type in whatever value you want, $5, $10, whatever, um, just to say thank you for, you know, the content or whatever. I've, maybe I've helped you out with something, one of my videos or whatnot. But, but I think the KT88 uh, amplifier build series really brought that out for some people. I'm not sure. Um, but I've gotten quite a few uh, donations over the last month or two. 
And I even got one this last week over Christmas for $200, and I was just blown away. But I, I told the individual, thank you very much. Just to let you know, anybody that, that does make a donation, I turned around within 30 minutes of getting that $200 donation, and I ordered $200 worth of uh, Teflon silver-coated wire that I need and some, um, some PTFE uh, sleeving I was running low on. So anything you donate will go right back to the channel. Might be a new camera, might be a new piece of test gear, something or another. But I just want to say a sincere thank you to those who have done so. I was reading some of my comments on the single ended KT88 amplifier, and um, I've also got a couple emails along this line of thinking. But it was basically, you know, Mark, I really like this amp. I really like the effort you went through to build it. I just can't spring for an $800 plus amplifier, you know, by the time you have shipping and whatnot in it. Is there anything you could build that might be, you know, less expensive than that, that uh, wouldn't take me months and months of saving up to get there? Was the, the general theme of these uh, of these statements. And, and it got me really, I was sitting on the couch with my wife last night watching a movie, and it really got me thinking, and I started searching for transformers and parts and components. And I'm just sitting here thinking, could I build a really good tube amplifier for let's say $350 or less. Would it be possible? Um, so I am on a journey right now. And so I'm seeking out and I'm going to see what I come up with. But I'm going to see if I can't design something, put a bomb together, um, everything it would, might would take. My goal is $350 or less. So similar to the KT88 build, it would be a series we would do like that together. But, uh, you know, I would end up calling it, I don't know, some snazzy name like El Cheapo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with a cool name for it that would kind of indicate, you know, low cost, uh, maybe thrifty amp or something. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. But um, but something that would be decent, um, that would be good enough for the average person. I think a lot about, like, the, uh, the Magnavox console amplifiers, right? Those are push-pull 6BQ5 amplifiers, about 20 watts, 16, 20 watts. But I have, I have restored some of those, sent them off with people, and they've put them in their garage or their basement or wherever. And they absolutely love these things. They think they sound amazing. And I agree with them. I think it's one of the best values for the money. But hey, if we were going to try to mimic something like that by just building it and buying new parts and components, could I get down to that same price point? You know, a couple of $350 or less is the goal. So I don't know. Give me your thoughts on this concept. Is it something you would be interested in? Is it something you'd want to build along with us? Is that price point? more in the budget range that people are thinking about. I think it could be a lot of fun. I think I'd also like to do a push-pull amplifier just because if you're not careful, you do something single-ended like a 6BQ5 or a 6V6 or something where, you, where you're trying to keep the price point down, but then you go single-ended and you built an amp that won't drive most speakers. You end up having to have a super high efficiency set of speakers. But uh, something like an EL84 push-pull amplifier, man, that'll drive the heck out of most people's uh, stereo speakers. So uh, I don't know. It's 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 something brewing up here in my head, and uh, and I'm gonna keep running with it until uh, until. Uh, so we either do it or don't. Uh, so give me your thoughts. Give me some feedback. Let me, let me know your thoughts on it. All right. Last topic of the day. I just kind of my thoughts on our 2019 agenda as it's kind of shaping up in my head. All subject to change. And certainly I will add new things that are not on this list as time moves along. First and foremost, when I am going to do this little thing where I share a lot of my records that I had done on my record label, um, but I think I might create a second channel for that and um, and kind of just point people that want to watch it over there and I uh, don't know if I want to cloud this channel up with that. So I don't know. It's on my list. At any rate, I do want to get back to more uh, learn how to read schematics. Um, I did a whole series on learning how to read tube amp schematics and I could probably go much much deeper than I did thus far and people seem to really have enjoyed those so I think I'm gonna 
probably make another five or ten of those uh, throughout the year. Um, preamp. Preamp is definitely on my list, high, high on my list. Um, you know, right now I've got the I've got it where I want it on a breadboard. I just gotta find the time to to get a chassis uh, laid out, get it put into the chassis, and then I gotta figure out what I'm doing with the phono section. And I've got a I've got something up my sleeve there that I've been working with another individual on that I uh, I think will pan out pretty well if I can make it happen. Um, certainly the analog discovery two and the uh, audio analyzer suite by the stuff made is. As you can see, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to keep grinding with it. Um, as I take over this transformer rewinding business from Gary, and I'm learning the transformer business and the ins and outs of uh, winding transformers and whatnot, I'm going to share that guy stuff with you. I, I didn't buy all this to hoard the knowledge. I'm going to. I'm, part of it is for me to learn and gain knowledge to be able to do some of this as a uh, little side business, but. But the other part of it was I want to be able to share this knowledge uh, with you guys as well. So uh, that's in the plans. I certainly want to do more gear reviews. Um, I have got a large amount, I'll leave it at that. I started to say gargantuan amount but of uh, gear around here that's my own that I could do reviews on. And I've got a lot of friends around with with uh, gear they might could bring over and uh, do some reviews on. So that my, my gear reviews seem to get a lot of uh, a lot of traction, a lot of views, and uh, and I enjoy doing them because I really like dissecting a, a piece of gear, both you know how does it sound as well as how does it perform on the bench. And sometimes those two are not uh, mutually uh, sometimes they're not mutually exclusive, you know. So uh, um, hopefully do more of those this year. I just talked about the El Cheapo amp. I don't know if that's what we're going to call it, but I had a lot of fun naming it that. Um, we're, I, that's on my list for the year. Um, I would like to get back to some more full restorations of gear. I've got a lot of stuff around here that needs restoring. Pro I probably own, let me just say it this way, a third of the gear I own is probably fully functional and it has been restored by me. Two-thirds of what I own probably is in some state of need of repair need of restoration, um, hasn't been touched in ages, those types of things. Um, and then the last thing, I keep getting requests from people that want to see more of my solid state stuff. They want to see more of the Marantz restorations, more of the sens sensory restoration. I'll be honest with you, it's not my favorite topic. I've done so much of that over the years. I'm just flat burnt out on it. Um, and so, you know, while I've done a lot of tube stuff over the years, I'm just continuing to branch out there and dive deeper. Um, but it's not to say I'm not going to do some more solid state stuff because you guys seem to certainly enjoy it. Matter of fact, sitting in front of me right now, I've got a Marantz 2500 that I picked up uh, a year or so ago that's all original. And um, I'd like to get it restored just for myself. Um, so yeah, I've got some stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna run through here over the next year. So stay tuned for that. G give me your thoughts. Post down below. What do you want to see in 2019? I'm trying to gather people's inputs, and uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm gonna respond to every single person's request. But when I start to see a thread, a theme going on, hey, I've, I've had 10 or more people ask for this thing. Like I had somebody today in an email uh, or a a quote asked me, hey, I'd really like to understand on the TV7 tube tester what all the other buttons and the uh, shorts and leakage, what do those tests do and how do they work? Well, you know, I've never shown you that. Um, so I thought, what the heck? I've had a few people ask for it, so I might as well. So uh, that'll be in an upcoming video as well. All right. That's what I've got on the docket for right now. Who knows? Uh, more could come along. Uh, we will see. And I will certainly take your input as a uh, as wisdom and feed it into the channel. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back in a week or so with uh, this, uh, hopefully, this uh, analog discovery two uh, stuff. I'm pretty stoked on it.